we wish that this small effort be used for the benefit of all beings everywhere and for the benefit of the Absolute. Tonight we read the final seventh sacred ceremony yeah, for the set of winter ceremonies and we're reading from chapter 3 of the Lost Works by E.J. Gold called Brother Judas the Compassions the Compassionate Betrayal Confessions of an Invisible and by way of introduction I'll read the paragraphs that refer to these group of winter sacred ceremonies. In the one year plan for the manufacture of divine man we have certain very definite stages of assembly. They have to be attended to exactly during these sacred times. In winter there are seven sacred ceremonies. November 25th is wish for birth. November 30th the ceremony of the terror of the sacrificial lamb. December 3rd the ceremony of consecration. December 8th the feast of love. December 13th the feast of union. December 20th, the Feast of Satisfaction, and December the 21st, I'll give that to you again, December the 25th, the Day of Birth. So now we'll read the reading for December the 25th, the Feast of Birth. The great river in the Hall of Learning is clear and still. It seems to be unflowing as an immensely perfect mirror. One silently gazes into it for a while then gives place to another. There are not many here at this great feast. At the hour of birth the soul gazes on itself unveiled. This is the hardest trial yet in the progression of ceremonies. In the still water one sees his own lives, his history revealed in crystal clarity without any veil or justification. Only the actions themselves are shown without blurring or softening. The facts are before one in their simplicity. One must stand before this inexorable record which does not stop until every single act is seen and told and the sum of each life is understood and reckoned exactly. Then, after the revelation of his life, one passes into the chapel of fire, giving his place to the river. I'll give that to you again. Giving his place at the river to his successor. 
The chapel of fire is like a great furnace without heat. As one enters, the animal soul, the mind, and the self are all burnt off in a flash at the doorway, leaving him naked. One is then impelled to walk into the light, although, as many do here on this threshold, one may turn and flee into the outer darkness. But if he endures, he will then behold himself as he is. Here he will need courage. He has chosen birth and is born. Then he passes out of the chapel of fire and into the chapel of silence, remaining there until Easter, having been parted from the active outer world during this time which is a period of individual integration. It is not until the ordeal of Good Friday is finished and the Divine Soul has suffered the last torture and gone completely into the tomb that one is inspired. One. I am ready to be burned and consumed, for that is birth. 2. I am ready to stand naked and unprotected, and to suffer from my nakedness, for that is life. 3. I am ready to surrender the pure bliss of unexpressed spirit for the pain of life in form, that I may know myself. 4. I am resolved to leave that which is permanent and certain for the road which is always new. 5. I am resolved to make the pilgrimage through the darkness of matter and stand in the fire, that the uncreated shall be one with the created. At first, in the ceremony of love, the voice of silence reaches one as a miraculous sound, only on rare occasions. But soon one begins to hear the voice of silence as a constant guide. It has begun to be understood as not only something to be obeyed willingly, but as something which must be obeyed just as absolutely as the laws of great nature. On the day of birth there comes to the inner ear a definite instruction. The desire of birth must be formulated into a prayer, which will eventually, if it is repeated sincerely enough and often enough, express the effort of real will. This prayer must be sustained for a year without cease and reinforced by remembering exercises and formed into new words each morning on the instant of waking up. The mind and desires and spirit of the seeker must be made to endure constant attention on this wish. It must never be forgotten or performed late, this daily ceremony. If it is omitted even once from the daily life, the will necessary 
to enter the Hall of Learning at the birth ceremony the following year will not be strong enough to enable one to even open the door to the chamber. The prayer must be continuous without any interruption for three minutes exactly and during those three minutes the prayer must be formed in three different ways consciously expressed in the mind here are the three wishes to be separated from all other desires and I'll repeat this three times one I wish for my soul to attain absolute harmony. 2. I wish only for absolute knowledge and understanding. 3. I wish only for absolute love. I wish for my soul to attain absolute harmony. I wish for only absolute knowledge and understanding. I wish for only absolute love. I wish for my soul to attain absolute harmony. I wish for only absolute knowledge and understanding. I wish for only absolute love. We wish that this small effort be used for the benefit of all beings everywhere and for the benefit of the Absolute. All phenomena is illusion, neither attracted nor repelled, not making any sudden moves. My habits will carry me through. Amen. Mm -hmm.